challenge, it's time for the 8th Mile Trail of Toe, presented by Extreme Diesel Performance. First competition uh, of the afternoon is going to be Trailer Toe. You guys are going to be hooked up to about a 10,000 pound trailer. Um, get up to the lights. When the lights say go, you go. Time doesn't start until you break the beams. Um, you have one shot to go. However, if you feel like you didn't get a good launch, if you pull out immediately and let your truck coast to a stop, we'll recognize that you feel like you didn't get a good launch. We'll allow you to back up and get, give it one more shot. All right, any questions about that? Unlike a traditional drag race, you are not going to see Rick Fox do a burnout up here. His tracks will be derived from those four very wide tires. He will undoubtedly launch this truck in four-wheel drive. We'll be able to tell immediately if he does it because there will be a humongous cloud of tire smoke coming off those big rear tires. Now he's going to roll through the staging beams here. He's going to have to back up a little bit. A lot of these competitors are versed on the drag strip. Just because he missed the beams, this is a track that uh, none of the competitors outside of one have ever raced down. So every track layout, a little bit different. Here comes Fox now. He's going to build boost. The, we'll see what his strategy is here, how aggressive he gets on the launch. Nice piece of work there, no wheel spin. Did a nice job of managing the wheel spin. Now look at the trailer start to wag back and forth a little bit. This is a stout run by Fox, 1048, 1049.8. Well, Rick Fox, that played out very well. Good starting line strategy. Not a lot of wheel spin or, uh, or axle hop out there. You proceed to run the fastest speed ever recorded in this event at uh, over 75 miles an hour. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's real awesome. I, I didn't even know how I did. Yeah, 1049 uh, with an 8 at 75.7 uh, .7 miles an hour. So you're a half mile an hour faster than anybody's ever done this before. Again, proving how much power this thing made in the dyno. You're able to apply it to the track. Awesome. Thank you. All right, man. We'll get back. now. No more weights today. Now it's just going to be letting her eat. So that's a good thing. Awesome. Thank you. J.D. Gleason, a guy who has been down this drag strip many times, but never, <laughs> with uh, several tons hooked to the back of your truck. What's the strategy coming out of the hole here? Uh, we're going to do like we've been doing, wing it. Let this truck do what it does best. If um, front, what, the axles under the truck are the stock axles that came with it? They are. Okay. Yep. So anything, uh, transfer case, anything anything done in the drive line to... Uh... Got a true track in the rear diff and nasty tranny. Oh, that sounds like a recipe for success. Good luck, man. Yes, sir. Thanks. So J.D. Gleason now is going to be building the boost. He's got the truck fully staged. The tree will come down, and then he will be able to leave when he wants. This is not a reaction time contest. Oh, yeah, you hear him break the tires loose. Really getting after out there. The thing clawing for traction. The trailer starting to wag back and forth. The transmission trying to find a gear. And J.D. Gleason goes 1066. And again, look at the speed. Up over 75 miles per hour. So 1066-0, 75.55 for J.D. Gleason. Man, that was cool. <laughs> I don't know how it felt in the truck, but boy, that trailer started wagging around pretty good, about 330 feet. Oh, it was starting to make power around then, but I should have let out of it, I think, and not spun so bad. I think I could have had Rick if, if I'd have let out of it. And, uh, but that's all right. So we did all right, and truck held together, and we're here to live another day. Mile an hour again was there. Rick Rick's run is the fastest ever we've ever had in this thing. He was 75.7. You were 75.5. So, I mean, it was pretty interesting to see the two trucks apply uh, that much power and get down within a couple tenths of a mile an hour. So, neat stuff. I feel good about that. <laughs> Rick's truck makes a lot of power. Cool, man. It'll be fun to see it unleashed next time out. Perfect. All right, Jesse, they're getting you hooked up back here. Did you make any adjustments to the truck, a little air pressure adjustment, anything in the suspension to get ready for this? Yeah, we dropped the air pressure to 20, 25 PSI the whole way around. You've done a lot of drag racing in this truck, obviously. Any uh, strategy ideas what you can do to try to get all this extra weight moving off the starting line? I'm going to try to come out halfway easy, try to keep them right on the edge of breaking traction, lock up, and then hit the nitro as soon as I lock up the converter. So I've never done this before, so I'm going to try to keep the tires from breaking loose and max power to the ground. Good luck, man. Thanks. We're only going to run one stage of nitrous. Okay, cool. And so it is time for Jesse Warren to take to the drag strip. This is one of our six-liter trucks. Jesse fared well on the dyno, fair to Midland performance in the trailer towing obstacle course, and now he's going to try to get this massive amount of weight moving off the starting line. He told, you heard him in his pre-race interview mention the fact he's going to try to come out pretty easy and try to keep the, the tires stuck to the pavement. That is what worked so well for Rick Fox. He did not break traction, laid down a very impressive run in the high 1040s in the eighth mile. Here comes the turbo boost. We'll find out how aggressive he's going to get right about now
One stage of nitrous going to be applied, he said. Well, so much for the traction department. Wow, he's just going to stand straight on it. Look at the thing weaving back and forth. Absolutely, whoa, a violent shake down there at about just before the eighth mile. And Jesse Warren goes through a speed of 71 miles an hour and a lap time of 11.548. 11.548, it barely chirped the tires coming off the starting line. He pedaled it and then he just decided to stand in it to make sure the truck didn't fall on his face and lose all that boost he had built up. 11.548 at 71 miles an hour and man, that thing made a crazy move as he got down close to the eighth mile mark. Well, that had to have felt interesting in the cab because it was really looked like it was moving around left to right down there at about the eighth mile. Yeah, I, I was kept breaking traction, so I think I came out of the hole a little bit too hard. I'm, I'm happy well, it wouldn't break any parts. Is part of the issue if you were if you were to totally lift and let the motor come down, you're going to lose the boost you built up type deal. So you got to try to keep the keep the motor up and keep the turbo spun up. Is that part of the yeah, kind of part of the problem or the, the I tough? I tried to back out of a sum, but you can't back out all the way. You lose everything you got. Well, cool, man. Still not a bad effort, and we'll see how the rest of the guys fare, but it is definitely an interesting experience, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. LaVon Miller, out of this whole group, are the only guy who has done this before, so how much of an advantage is that? It is an advantage because I know a little bit how it was last year, uh, but it doesn't keep parts together, so <laughs> you always balance just between horsepower and uh, being able to win, so you need enough to go fast, but not enough to make carnage. If there is one concern, it, just in generally speaking, is it axles, is it a transmission, is it a transfer case? What part of the driveline is really taking the most abuse here? I'd say the transmission probably suffers the most abuse, just hitting torque converter lock up in the middle of second gear with 10,000 pounds in tow at 1,000 horsepower. I'd call anybody else crazy if they if they asked, they tell me that they wanted to do it and we sign up for it, so. Well, good luck, man. Thank you. So it is LaVon Miller coming up, and Miller again with the Large cubic inch Cummins Stroker engine in here. Started with a 6.7 engine and went bigger from there. So a ton of torque. If you heard him talk about how much CFM that cylinder head flows, makes a ton of power down low. You get that short sidewall tire on the back and the front. We'll see if that aids or hurts him in hooking this thing up off the starting line. Wow, a beautiful launch for LeVon Miller. Didn't break the tires loose. It is hunting around pretty good down there through the 330 foot mark and now down to the eighth mile. LaVon Miller goes 10 25 with a nine at 75.83 miles an hour. A new diesel power challenge record 10 25 9 at 75.83. That was literally as picture perfect as you could imagine doing this job. Wow. Well, as we feared might happen, a rainstorm came over top. Of Bandamere Race, where actually a pretty decent thunderstorm came came across the racetrack. As you can see behind me, we've got all kinds of equipment out there. We got the magazine staffs working, we got spectators working, anybody we could find, we got them on a piece of equipment. The goal, of course, get the track dry, continue on with the trailer tow, and then get on with the drag race. And Jaron Holder will be the first truck down that dried and just freshly dragged. Now it's not sprayed. The track had not been sprayed for the previous competitors. It was not sprayed now. It was simply dragged over once it was dried. And now Jaron Holder, and arguably the lightest truck in the program, that could be a, it is a benefit when you're racing something without a trailer behind it, and it could be a detriment to him here. Having the lightest truck not really to your favor when you're trying to pull this very, very heavy trailer down the track. Of course, we're going an eighth mile distance here. Jaron spooling the turbos, that six liter. Ford Power Stroke V8 under the hood. Chassis working real good there. You start plant the rear tires, and he starts to really let it eat at 60 feet. And Jaron Holder, the truck shifts cleanly, making a good, good run down here. And Holder goes through 11.23.1 with a speed of 70.89. 11.23.1 with a speed of 70.89 miles an hour for the six-liter truck of Jaron Holder. All right, Jaron, the lightest truck in the field, so it's probably a tricky program to get off the starting line, but the thing didn't leave. You didn't spin the tires too hard. It seemed like it hooked up pretty good. Yeah, I only launched about 10 pounds. I know I heard everybody else launch probably like 15, 20. I think I could do that with this weight. So I didn't blow them off. I'm satisfied with the number. I wish I go a little faster. You've done a lot of drag racing in this truck, so it must have felt weird to do it with that much weight sitting yeah, behind I, you. It was, it was a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. Hopefully we can get the heads up portion of the program in this afternoon, which the lightweight that hurts you in that side of the deal will probably help you. Hopefully. Yeah, cool, man. Good Thank luck. you. Hey, Buck, have you ever an eighth mile drag race this truck before? Or do you know what it normally runs in the eighth? No, I don't. No. 
Never run to strike four. Talking to the other guys, you got a strategy for coming off the starting line? Any idea how much boost you're going to come out on? Not a whole lot. I'm just going to like gradually roll into it so I don't scatter. That way I'll live another day. So Buck Stoneburn are going to stage the Dodge truck up here. So as you heard Buck say, he has never drag raced this truck before. Stoneburner going to work his way back. He had this truck a little bit deep, too deeply staged. He was actually catching it with the rear tires there. So Sean Holman is going to back him up. You see those two stage beams there. So he is now going to inch the truck ahead and turn on the two lights at the top of the Christmas tree. Truck, of course, very stout. But in this field of Titans, it does fall on the lower end of the horsepower and torque scale. And with no drag racing experience to speak of, this should be very interesting for a Buck Stoneburner. And he had planned on rolling out of the hole, and that seems to be what he's doing. He's going to start feeding the power to it gradually. That was actually a pretty fine strategy, and now that thing sounds really healthy. Down past the 330-foot mark, shifts into high gear and goes through the eighth mile with a time of 14.698 seconds at 62 miles an hour. And you heard Buck say he wanted to live to fight another day, and with that strategy, he certainly will. All right, man. First question, you look like you're having a little effort, uh, had to add a little additional effort in the steering wheel to get this lined up. Yeah, I'm running ARB air lockers in the front and the rear, and when the front's in, it's in. Second question, do you have, now you have more contact patch tire-wise than the other guys that have been out here. How much do you think that's going to aid you getting, this, uh, getting all this weight moving? Well, the track's still a little slick, I think. Um, it could help me. It could hurt me really bad if it bites hard enough and breaks. Um, I don't know. And last question, strategy coming out. What is your, uh, are you going to try to roll into power or what? My truck makes power pretty early on, so I don't have to be, I don't have to spool it up as hard as some of the other guys. So we'll see how it does. Well, cool, man. Your, your, uh, your, your pulling experience may come, into, may come into play here, although this is certainly a different service than you're normally used to hooking up on, aren't you? It's a whole different experience. I don't have the most drag racing experience with this truck, um, but we'll see. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. <laughs> cool, man. Thanks. So it is Jared Rice from Illinois coming up here in the big Ford F-350 Dually. This truck has some very heavy-duty components, and at the rear end is a Dana 80, which is, a, those of you, of course, are familiar with that, is just a massive, massive piece. He has lockers front and back, so all six tires will be getting the equal amounts of power when he decides to come off the starting line. This truck is actually set up as what would be known as a work stock pulling truck, meaning that when you look at the engine, it looks like it is a stock engine, but the pieces have been very highly modified. It makes a ton of power. There is an opportunity for a big number here or some really big breakage, depending on how hard this thing hooks to the drag strip. This truck makes a lot of power down low. You're going to notice he's not going to wind it up as hard as the other guys did in the starting line. It's going to start making its boost in power at a much lower RPM. Tree comes down, and Jared Rice gets ready to turn her loose out here in the eighth mile at Bandemir Speedway with 10,000 plus pounds hooked to the bumper. Boy, he was really easy for the first 60 feet and then just stood into it in a nice clean run, not moving around at all. And Rice goes 11.881 at 70 miles an hour. So 11.881 at 75.56 miles an hour for Jared Rice. So in a drag strip like Bandimir, they, they take a lot of pride in preparing this track. So what they actually have out here is a layer of rubber on top of the concrete track surface. What's happening because of the massive amount of weight on the rear axle of these trucks and the stack that they have the really lugged street tires on it, it's literally digging through and peeling up that rubber layer. As these trucks make this big traction and try to get down the course, it's digging right in. This is a good thing for them here because it's allowing them to get off the starting line. When we get into the heads-up drag race, the more bald this becomes, the less traction they're actually going to have without all that weight on the rear axle. All right, Jerry Atkins, it's been two Cummins power trucks that have kind of set the pace at this thing. So how are you feeling here? Getting ready to try to live up to that expectation? Hoping the track holds. I mean, I, I'm confident that the truck's all right, but just hoping the track's old. So. How, uh, how heavy or how hot do you plan on coming out of the hole in this thing? Uh, as hard as I can. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know how hard I'm going to be able to push it with the track, but I'm going to come out as hard as it'll let me. So Sound we're going we're gonna to push it a little bit. Sounds good, man. Good luck. All right, thank you. Jerry, of course, is a fairly experienced drag racer, so he's going to get the boost built up. And he is fully staged now. 
He said he's going to try to come out as hard as a track will let him. We'll see if that plan is going to work. Oh, you saw the front end move around a lot there. He laid into it, though. It's hooked up. Gets into a little bit of a wobble between the gear changes there, but a, whoa, a big move down there at the eighth mile. 11.03 at 76.21 miles an hour. So you see the mile an hour on that is pretty incredible. He lost some ET because of the, the easiness of the launch, but 76.21 miles an hour in the eighth. Big stuff from Jerry Atkins. Well, Jerry Atkins, as you well know, uh, as you all know, when you look at a drag strip time slip and you look at the mile an hour, that's always an indication of horsepower. 76.29, one of the, if not the fastest run we've ever had in the eighth mile trailer tow here. That thing was booking. Thank you. I, uh, if it would have bit a little harder, it had a little more left in it. I was hoping for tens, but you cannot be upset with that number. <laughs> no. Track is hooking. Yeah, track is hooking, and we could tell it was interesting because it, the thing made a move. I don't know if it was on the gear change or what it was. It was me. Okay. It was me. I kind of shook a little bit, but I was trying to. Sh I actually went down through there basically one-handed. Okay. So if you, if anyone watches the video and buys the DVD, you'll see probably one-handed. <laughs> but I was running down through there and just smooth pass. Awesome, awesome feeling. Yeah, man, that was a great number, and uh, we'll see you the drag race portion of the program. All right, thank you. See you guys. All right, Corey Chomo is going to come up here in the highest riding truck of the competition. Funny little moment there. Wes, uh, Wes Beach, a former champ uh, of this uh, Diesel Power Challenge, is yelling at your four-wheel drive because I think that was an error he made a year or two ago. Yeah, it is. And actually, after he did that last year, I was the very first person he came and see. And he, he came down, and we're standing right there, and he came and sat down beside me, and we had a little talk. I tried to help him out. So I'm going to make sure that we don't have that talk, but uh, there might be a shaft or two flying on this. We'll see. I don't know if I can spool it or not, so we'll see. All right, man. Well, good luck. Thanks a lot, buddy. Corey Shomo said he wasn't sure if he'd be able to spool the massive 118 millimeter atmospheric turbo on this track. We're about to find out. If it does happen, boy, this thing really should be able to hook up and roll. Nope. The turbos did not want to light off and it's very lazy. When it does, here it comes. Literally cannot see the truck now lost in the humongous outpouring there. Shomos works his way down 16.45.6 at 62 miles an hour and that was the one thing he was afraid of happen. Those big giant turbo, that big giant 118 millimeter atmospheric turbo not able to spool so the truck very lazy for the first part of the course. All right Bill you're going to be the grand finale here in our eighth mile uh, trailer pull. You've watched everybody else go down the track. Uh, what's looked like it's worked and what's your plan? Do you have a plan? <laughs> Just have fun give her hell. You're gonna come out. You're gonna just wind the thing up. Get any any boost number in mind to come out on, or just? Uh... Well, hopefully right around 15, 18 okay. is the plan. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what actually happens, right? Yeah, this is all new to me, so it'll be exciting. Good luck, man. Thank you, buddy. So here comes Bill Witters. Witters, of course, in the big black dually here, the Darth Vader-esque LML Duramax GMC. And we're just working his way up. Creeping that truck ahead. He's going to get it into that pre-stage position. Just about there, just about there. And we're just rolled the train before it came down, so he's going to give it hell, but he will not get a time slip as he fights his way down through the eighth mile. That thing sounds like it's chewing pretty hard down there. And Witters. So there goes Witters down the racetrack. Now he did not get a time slip because he left before the Christmas tree was activated. So apparently he will be given a default time. So at the close of a rain extended, eighth mile trailer tow, it is LaVon Miller who will claim the prize to win this event. So Miller, who did a very good job during the obstacle course, now comes down to the drag strip and does a fantastic job here. All that's left now is the Heads Up Drag Race program, and Miller's truck is one of the most powerful in the field, could be a favorite there as well.
square off. Oh, a huge starting line advantage for, for LeVon Billard. And Billard, not going to work the truck too hard. Knows he has him covered. Billard goes 11, 38, 6, 122. And Gleason goes 11, 72, 8 at 121 miles per hour. So Miller, with a big starting line advantage, gets down there without any sweat to knock off J.D. Gleason.